My next guest certainly has the X Factor. Daniel Johnson was in the semi-finals of Series 6. Over the last few years, he's been helping support charities and is widely known as ambassador for the People's Postcode Lottery. We chat about his latest podcast, Best Thing and the Little Help Project. Daniel shares his enthusiasm about lifting people's spirits and his candid view on life. The TV sofa is forever calling to put on his own chat show. Let's find out more. Daniel, welcome to Tea Time with me, Ali Monjak. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I was just working out where the cushions were going. Was it two? Was two too much? Was one? Was it this side? Was that side? Then do you know what I realised? It doesn't matter. It's fine. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. It's just really good to see you as well. So, you know, I know you've started your own podcast recently. And so talk about that. I mean, that was an inspiration through lockdown, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think that everyone was watching things on the news and uh, they were scaring themselves half to death. And I think that, you know, that's fair. You've got to keep up with the information that's going on out there. But actually, there's another side to that. And there's things that are happening day to day and not all bad things and uh, some nice things and um, lovely stories about people doing stuff for other people and just, you know, getting to know what the actual neighbor's name is, which is quite, you know, rare because most people don't know their neighbor's names anymore. So I decided to start a podcast and call it Best Thing. Um, And uh, it's pretty much we just get guests on and we talk about some of the best things in their lives from uh, TV and film to food, travel, music, something random so they get to choose their own uh, category they can talk about. We've had like Greek mythology, buses, hotel rooms, bicycles, motorbikes, trees. Like you can even make it up about what we've had. It's all over the place. We've had some wonderful, wonderful guests. I think we kicked it off uh, with my co-host, which is a guy called Adam Harris, and he does a section called Fat Chicken. And everyone's just like, what is Fat Chicken? And it's because he misheard what I said. And I said, you'll be fat checking things in the podcast. Anyway, what's Fat Chicken? So now the whole thing's called Fat Chicken. So, um, which actually we're bringing out a book. A uh, book should be um, out um, at the end of the year, um, uh, which is going to have um, 25 facts that you never knew or need to know, but you, they're, they're there anyway with some lovely illustrations uh, by one of the designers, JMD. And uh, yeah, so we um, Adam kicked it off. And then since then, we've had a couple of S Club 7 people, juniors and senior club. Uh, We've had a great soul singer called Connor Reeves, who I was a massive fan of back in the day. And if you haven't heard his music, listen, it's great. Um, We've had my mum on the podcast. She's been absolutely great. Michael Chat Raverty, who was from uh, Bake Off, the writer of Benadorm, Darren Litton, who doesn't do any podcasts. He's done two in the last four years. And for some reason, he silly enough did mine. And um, this season has been crazy. We've had Tom Reed Wilson. A lot of people get to know him. He's lovely, posh, lovingly beautiful voice that he's got, full body voice that he's got. And he's just one mastermind. And he was on the Mary Berry uh, Best Home Cook for the Beast. He was brilliant, wasn't he? I, d- I thought he was amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been great. And we've had um, the Go Compare Man, uh, Win Evans and, and uh, stuff like that. So it's been nice because we're getting behind like, when people are being interviewed, it's always about something and best yeah. thing's not about anything. Like you can promote stuff at the end, but really it's just, who are you? And telling the best thing about food for you and, and you know, or traveling or music and stuff. And you get little tips. And then we've got live music in it or with Bethia Beats that she helps um, bring through new unsigned acts. And we've got film review guys, Tom and Revan that does the film review guys, uh, film review stuff. And then next season, season four, because we're already on season three, Joe McElroy just finished it, the winner of my year of X Factor. Um, uh, season four, we are filming. We're going to be taking it to YouTube and we're going to be changing out the format a little bit, but um, with a couple of added extras. So it's going to be very exciting. Hopefully September. So Fantastic. So, yeah, never a dull moment in your life, Daniel. Hey, so, no. yeah, let's just wind the clocks back a bit because, I mean, your life completely changed, didn't it, in 2009, as we know, as a local Reading boy. So, I mean... Talk about that. What was it like from going from being a, you know, a drama and a dance teacher to suddenly being, you know, this this spectacular voice on on X Factor? Yeah, I mean, so it's 12 years ago now, which just makes wow. everyone really, really old, especially me, because I was in the overs then. So that's how old I am. Like, that's crazy. Right. Um, anyway, so, um, you know, just doing my life. And the auditions came up and, and one of my students, his name's Sam Chapman, was just like, you should, um, you should do X Factor, sir. And I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to do that because 
I'm not going to do that. And then anyway, um, and then I did. Um, and yeah, it just went all a bit crazy. And obviously for my first audition, um, that got televised and, and shown all over the world, not even really through YouTube at the beginning, I think. It was on a Today Show for New York, and um, there were talks of me talking to Oprah and Ellen and all this stuff. Like they had to shut it all down because they can't really have too many favorites at the beginning and stuff like that. But I think one of the things I love about my year of doing X Factor in 2009, the first episode, so the first ever episode of 2009, not only did they change up the fact that they were doing the live auditions, a bit like Britain's Got Talent, in front of everyone in the, in the, you know, in the auditorium at the Excel Center in London. But um, uh, that first episode that they put out had Stacey Solomon, Joe mm -hmm. McKeldry, Jedward. And Jedward, yeah. In that first episode. And mm -hmm. that literally is most of the top six. You're just missing out Ollie and Lloyd, right? So like, they had something. And I think what, especially with our year, a lot of those names are still household names. You've got Lucy Jones in yeah. there. In, in Eurovision and there's a star in the West End, Rachel Adedeji, who has the most amazing name ever for <laughs> Peter Dixon, who was also on the podcast. Um, and, uh, uh, and then she was in Hollyoaks and stuff like that. She's on West End. Um, you know, Joe McKeldry, who's won every single reality TV show he's ever done. X Factor, uh, pop star to opera star and The Jump. I said like, when you do Strictly in Eurovision, you better win. So I'm just gonna, just gonna say that. So, uh, but yeah, so life got flipped. <laughs> More of a songwriter, isn't he, Joe McAldrey, isn't he? More of a songwriter. No, no, he's still smashing out music. He's the hardest working man there is. Yeah, he has never stopped working, ever. He just does it. And he's done about 15 pantos. I don't know how he's fed them all in, but... Yeah. Oh, so, yes, he has. <laughs> oh, no, he hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that's pretty much like, you know, um, the story back then and what sort of what happened. Yeah, I mean, it was an unusual year, wasn't it? Let's face it, Series 6. I mean, there did seem to be sort of like a lot of budding stars, as you said, have all gone on to be household names. Um, and who would have thought it? Who would have thunk it? Hey. So, but I mean, you know, for you, it really kind of changed your dynamic. And with your sort of um, celebrity star status, you've really, over the years, put it into good use, haven't you? I mean, you support loads of local charities, um and gone on to do, do people's postcode lottery which is great as well i mean you do a fabulous amount of work with launchpad don't you for example in reading i do i do and it's a lovely lovely charity of trying to help like people who find themselves in difficult positions so um you know that they don't have a place to call home uh and they and launchpad really do help um, and they've been going for such a long time and they put on these wonderful events. We have the, a carol service at Christmas and we have a pancake race with loads of businesses that raise loads of money during, during the middle of the year. And uh, we do the sleep out as well. So, um, you know, just to experience what it is like to sleep outside for one night. And by the way, I have done it. It was horrible. I want to do it again, but I will do it again because it's a good reminder to see how pampered sometimes we stress about loads of different things and think about the last thing you stressed about and then you say it to someone else who's going through something crazy. Um, it sort of puts our, puts our sort of mood into perspective about like what to expect and not to maybe sweat the small stuff too much. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree with you more. So, I mean, you also do work, don't you, with the John Sykes Foundation for people in Reading again, because, you know, you are a, a homeboy, aren't you? You are completely a Reading born and bred boy and never lost your roots <laughs> yeah I mean so uh, and it's so funny that you say that because I'm actually not from Reading I'm actually from London and I moved to Reading when I was 14 but the way they embraced me um and and looked after me so much even to this day um how how could I ever say no and I think I said on many of occasions if you need me and I am free I will help and you know people have asked me all different things and Pretty much what I know, I've, I've not said no. Someone's probably going to say, yeah, you should know it to me once, but, uh, but what I know of, I've, I've not said no if I was free and stuff. So, uh, and if I wasn't free, we worked out at a different time. Yeah, John Sykes stuff is great and they're doing some really good bits and bobs right now. And, and uh, I think they're doing um, this, um, giving a thousand pounds to people who've made a difference in charity. We give flowers and tickets to stuff and blah, blah, blah. And John does it. And the rest of the team do a really, really good job on that. And, and, and it's just amazing. And, and back in the day, I was helping with Red Balloon and, 
and, and, and stuff that was that's in and around Reading and um, it, it's, it's, it's nice it's nice to just give back if you've got the time and you know the chance because I'm still saying thank you for people for unbelievably changing my life and now obviously I go around and knock on people's doors and ring people's doorbells um, and make people very What does happy. that feel like? Let me just stop you there. What does that feel like when you know that somebody's won all that money? So what does yeah, that feel it, like? I, I will gauge the story when I'm speaking to them. So it's a bit like I'm just chatting chat to you now, conversation at the beginning. If no, they won a prize. They, if I'm speaking, if they're speaking to me, Jeff, Matt, Jude, then they won at least a thousand pounds. So um, So to tell them that they have won more, and when I know their backstories about what, you know, the last year has been like, or the last five years has been like, or the money worries that they've had and stuff like that, that it's all going to be eradicated. Um, and that sweat and that sadness that you may have had and you can't, couldn't sleep is going to go because you're going to have another quandary and thinking, what do I now spend the money on? Now I don't have to worry about where the next you know bills going to come in i don't have to worry about it anymore because i can just pay it if i had a bit of credit card debt i can just pay it you know and um and then love, lovingly our winners always say that they're going to help other people before themselves so they're, they're very family motivated um and uh, that's that's the lovely and then we've got the charities now outside is 700 million 700 million pounds that's gone to charities so um it's it's and especially in this last year people have not been given to charities as much because it's hard. Mm. Uh, and so to be able to, you know, still help those charities out and they rely on us and the, and the players as well is, is huge. So I, I'm so lucky to have this job. Only four people in the whole country and I think in the whole world, I think there's only maybe about, I don't think there's more than 15 of us. So I couldn't even think of a, a, a better job to have for myself. And it, it must be actually incredibly humbling, mustn't it? Of course, um, you know, people tell you their, it's a bit like being a hairdresser, you know what I mean? People tell you their stories, they tell you a lot because um, they feel like they can trust you. You know, they see you on TV or they, you know, they get the opportunity to, to sit down. If we're there in person or we're doing it on Zoom like now, you know, they, they really are open and honest and uh, they just love the fact that we make such a big deal about them because we should do because they are winners. And, um, and also they've been helping and they've been playing and it's a big change is going to come. So if they won 30,000, 50,000, 100, 200, 300, I mean, you know, numbers go up. So, but it's, it's incredible. We just have men, women, everyone just burst into tears. Yeah. And if yeah. And I mean, I mean, you know, previously you probably were able to give them a hug and, you know, feel part of that emotion as well that they're going through. I mean, what an amazing job. I have it's to say. It's great, and uh, and people, if they do it on Zoom, they only have to tidy one room, so it's fine. Just have this much. Just have tracksuit bottoms on, pair of shorts, and flip-flops. Who cares? <laughs> Just put a jacket on and look fine. It's good. No, do you know what? Since I've been doing interviews over Zoom, I, I've had people turn up in all sorts. I've had people show me their pyjama bottoms. <laughs> You're talking in sunglasses. You had something with sunglasses. I was like, is, is it that sunny? Is that what's going on? It's fine. Okay. Why not? If, if you feel safe in sunglasses on Zoom, then I wouldn't be able to see. So no, dark. well, I think that there's a little bit of a story behind that one, actually. There is a bit of a story behind that one. So, um, yeah, the, the person that I interviewed, Jimmy Nash. Yeah. So, yeah, very funny interview and quite disarming doing a, an interview like that. I mean, I would have preferred if he just turned up in his pyjamas, to be honest. So, you yeah, know. Because there's a barrier, isn't there? Like, there's a barrier of just, like, I'm not in the mood for this. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, where you connect with people, don't you, by their facial expressions and their eyes, and and um, it was... That's all we normally see. We only see the eyes now. We don't see yeah. anymore. <laughs> it's all good. You know what? I love those masks, though, don't you, with the, the lips? Oh, yeah. Well, you can, you know, they've got a pretend smile or something. <laughs> because uh, I think that that's just really, yeah... Just so disconcerting not being able to tell what somebody's actually expressing you know because it's, it's a big part of it True. really isn't it so, so you've started this podcast and and have you got any other projects going on at the moment to, to help other people or be involved yes. with other people? Um, funny you should ask that uh yeah i have one it's called little help and it's a um 
it's a whole project. There, there is a podcast of it, um, but it's um, it was put back a little bit because we we're supposed to be taking it to schools and colleges and unis and businesses and stuff. Obviously, that didn't help uh, by not doing that. And I feel like it's a thing in person more than it's a thing to do on Zoom. Maybe later on, you can do it on social and social media and do it on video calls. But at the beginning, I think it's better to be in the room with people. And so I decided to just record um, some of them down. So I've done nine weeks worth of uh, Little Helps. It's every single day. It's wherever you get your podcast. It's just called Little Help with me. And uh, it's two minutes every morning. That is all it is. Little pep talk, get stuff done, do stuff, be better, be nicer, be happier be sadder, whatever you need to do, right? And uh, probably not be sadder, but sometimes the ebbs and flow in some sort of things, you kind of need sadness to have happy. So it's, it does happen. Um, and yeah, so it's it's uh, it's really early stages. I think we're only on week three. Um, there's going to be 10 week block and then there's going to be some added extras. We did a, um, um, a little special uh, with a girl called Hayley King and she's got a, a charity called Sienna Smile and, and uh, uh, she raised awareness for sickle cell for international sickle cell day so we did a special which was on the 19th of june which if you haven't listened to you can it's there everything's there um but we've done it in days and blocks so we've got monday all the way to saturday which i call the weekend so you can get a choice to listen to it and then we come back the next monday with new topics and we we get you all the way through so it'd be like cleaning your house saying that you're not like saying you like yourself in the mirror um and, and it's just um like getting that thing done that you've been putting off um you know and if you if you don't want to do something and you just want to have a day to relax, then actually relax. Don't just say it, do it. So, um, and, 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 you know, and try something new, uh, which is, and that could be food. That could be um, an outdoor activity that you've not done before. You've never played tennis or whatever, or you've ever done gardening or, you know, built a bird box, you know, who knows, but, you know, try something new because those things make you better because it's just layers upon layers. You don't have to be a world champion at anything. You just have to do it. But that's really good idea, actually, because, you know, let's face it, a lot of people, I mean, without, you know, problems of, of you know, finances or losing jobs or, you know, people being seriously poorly as well has been a big one through this pandemic of really suffered. Actually, people in general have suffered, haven't they? You know, mm. because as so, people, so, so, and if, um, if everyone suffers, if mm. everyone suffers, we're on the same line. So yeah. then don't let yourself suffer more. Go and improve whatever's going on in whichever way. If you don't like your job, change your job, right? If you don't like your situation, go for counseling and try and figure out what you can do to do it. You know what I mean? Don't just lay in it. Sometimes it's good to kind of marinate in the situation because sometimes you need to. You don't need to fight every battle, but you can change anything that you want. It's not, it's not overnight. It might take a year. It might take five years, mm. but you're the only one who can do it. If you whinge about stuff forever, it's kind of your fault. You need to, you need to move it on. So anything that happens, bad things are supposed to happen to you. So remember the good things that happen to you as much as the bad things. Don't just be down there. Try and make sure there's a, like a little bit. I always say try and be in the middle. Try and be level. Try and look for contentment. Contentment's here. That is happy. That is sad. If you're always here and you go up to happy, you only drop down to contentment. And if you're sad, you only go back up to contentment. You don't have to go all the way up there. It's too far of a jump to do that. So just always look to try and be content and every day, and then you'll feel a lot better in yourself. Do you know what? That's really, really good advice. That is, you know, definitely. Because, you know, I've interviewed loads of people, as you know, through news and everything. And yeah, it's listening to to some people's stories you can see that they've visibly made a jump up here from being down there as you put it and you know that is quite it's not sustainable is it it's not really sustainable no. in life it's about no, being not at all. in your within yourself i think isn't it and also clap yourself you know, pat yourself on the back if you've done something good i know it's not a british thing to do but just say well done like yeah. document some stuff that you've done and that you've achieved and you've got somewhere, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it sounds really stupid, but just write things down. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to get, everyone's got a mobile phone in their pocket, right? So yeah. I'm not asking you to get a pen and paper. I'm not asking you to get a quill and like, you know, to find some ink for something. Just write it in your notes of things that you've achieved today. Someone's life that you changed, even in, in this split second. And then write down also the, verse and the versions back to you of someone just saying something really nice, you know what I mean? Like go and make that effort. 
Don't think about making the effort. Make the effort. Because the problem about it, and, and you know, a lot of people are dealing with death right now, and there's been death all around and stuff like that. Don't ignore those people that may need you. Go and just message them. Give them a missed call. Because they know. They don't have to answer, but they know you tried. Because the worst thing ever is not trying. You only regret what you don't do. You never regret what you do do. You know what I mean? And I just said do do, but fair. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick it up. we got to pick it up when it happens. But, you know, it, 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 and, and we just, you know, I'm an over-talker and I'm an over-sharer and stuff like that. But that's fine. And, 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 and uh, is that supposed to be a negative thing? No, it doesn't have to be. That's what my job is. So, you know, as a presenter, when I'm doing a podcast, I look on the thing and I'm like, how much am I speaking compared to my guest speaking? And I try <laughs> to make sure that I want to hear them. It's my podcast and my platform, so I need to shut up. And I, you know what I mean? And it's those sort of situations because everyone has stories. But the great thing about your podcast, I think that you make it bubble along so nicely. You ask some lovely questions as well, and you get guests that just can say stuff. And I think that that's, that's what you do really great. So I'm just, there you go, compliment there for you, Alice. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> You've, you've also sort of come on and critiqued my podcast. Thank you so much. That is kind. No, no critiquing. No critiquing. It's great. I think it's absolutely fantastic. That's what I'm saying, that you really know how to do it. And I think that you allow us and the, your guests to tell their stories and you just have the right questions to move it on because we're all bubblers and we like the sound of our own voices. So in some sort of format, like how you do your stuff is perfect. So it's great. I think the guys, where you were working before, definitely going to miss you because it's hard to replace someone like you wow <laughs> thanks i don't quite know what to say to that <laughs> you, said, you said it you said it just take the compliment and say thanks, yeah. that's it. thanks. That's it. thanks. no 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 that, I, I wasn't quite expecting that but that that's lovely thank you so much so yeah i mean like you i enjoy what i do and the the point for me is that i love people and i love hearing their stories and, you know, how they make a difference. Everybody makes a difference in life, as you said. Um, yeah. But they don't realise it sometimes, do they? You don't need to realise it. I say that compliments are for when you're dead. Don't try and look for them. Just keep on living your life. Be nice to a degree. Don't be nice all the time. It's weird. But, like, do you know what I mean? Just don't be too mean. Kind of keep like some stuff to yourself. I know we can all be a bit, can I swear, bitchy about stuff. But, like, don't. You know what I mean? Like, just live your life and just try and be, try and stay out, keep your head down, try and stay out of drama. I know people like a bit of drama and we, you know, we all have it. Try and make better decisions. You only learn from making mistakes. So don't, you know, don't worry about the mistakes because that's, that's how we get better. But just try and make better decisions from that, you know, and, and work out what you're not very good at and get people to fill those spaces that you want, you don't have, like friends, family, partner, you know, they might fill their space with the things you can't do if you're not very good at washing up but they're very good at washing up then great if they're not if you're very good at making cakes but they're very good at making dinner or cleaning or whatever like try and find you know things that complement you as well as like make you feel you know be a better person and vice versa I couldn't agree with you more and I think you know lockdown has has done a lot for a lot of people hasn't it and given people time to to think about their lives and certainly um, you've come up with a, a couple of amazing um, things to, to help people. So, you know, I can sort of envisage you now. I'm, I'm kind of laughing about this, but I can envisage you having a TV show where, you you know, it's like being on the sofa with Daniel talking about, you know, changing your life and life coaching, really. Yeah, and do you know what? It's not even, it's not even really life coaching. What it is, it's just getting rid of excuses. You've got to do it. I can say any words, right? It's a bit like your parents used to tell you stuff. You're not going to listen. You will give up or you will start something when you're ready. And I have this new saying now, which is start now. But you can only say it when you're ready to start now. But once you said it, you have to start now. So if you want to do a project, if you want to give up, you know, smoking or drinking, or you want to make, start making pizzas, whatever, right? When you're ready, Start now. This is how you're doing your, your podcast and, and, and stuff like that and how I'm doing mine and stuff like that. Because it's an effort. It's tough. There's editing. The, this is easy. But you've got to get guests. I've already postponed on you. And you're like, oh, well, that's when I was free. You know, things happen. But what we have to do is we have to have content. 
and just build it and build it and build it. And who cares if you only have five listeners? Like, I'm not saying that's all you've got, but like, I don't, if I only have five people that listen to my podcast, I'm doing a show for five people that like the podcast. I don't care. I think you should only care about the people at your party. Don't worry about the people not. They'll come if they want to. Like, just care about the ones that are there. And that's what I try and do. I think you just need to be passionate, don't you, about what you're doing. And you are, you know, you are. And that, that's, that's the main thing. That's the key ingredients. That's the secret sauce, isn't it? Just be passionate about what you, you believe in and, and keep on doing what, you know, you love doing because it will pay off in the end anyway. And even if it doesn't, I don't care. It's only for me. And if other people like it, great. If I write music and other people like it, great. If I make content and they like it, great. If they don't, okay. Like if you, if someone said to me, if you don't like dinosaurs, no matter how well and how good Jurassic Park is a film, it's not for you. But if you love dinosaurs, I'd watch Jurassic Park. You know, that sort of situation, if it's not for you. And sometimes I feel like trying to get people to watch a video or, 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 or subscribe to a, um, a platform, like to, watch, to listen to a podcast, you could say to someone, would you rather drink this cup of bleach or listen to my podcast? <laughs> and they don't listen to podcasts. They're kind of thinking they might do the bleach because it's really difficult because it's not their thing. And we have another saying, yet. And this is one of the big words that we're using in one of the talks that I'm doing, uh, which is every talk um, and the longer talks that I'm going out to do is based on one word. Uh, and one of the talks we're going to be doing is called yet. And if you apply the word yet to most things that you have in your life that you would say would be negative or, or you, you don't feel confident with, if you say, I can't speak French. Yet. I can't put up a shelf. Yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't play tennis well. Yeah. You know, on and on and on, right? But there's an element of there's a future thing. You just have to put the work in. You didn't learn how to ride a bike straight away. You didn't learn how to swim straight away. You didn't learn to talk or walk or any of those things. They all took time. All right. And you mainly did most of that stuff as a child. So not to be able to do it as an adult. I know there's more things in life and, you know, it gets compacted down. You've got family, friends, bills, houses, blah, blah, blah. But you can do stuff. The only person standing in your way is you. Yeah. And that's another talk. So, yeah. So there's loads of stuff going on. Yeah, no, that, that is an amazing pet talk. Well, I wasn't quite expecting <laughs> on this podcast. But, <laughs> you know, as always, it is lovely to see you. And so if people want to, you know, my listeners want to subscribe to, to you, how do they find you? Uh, best way um, you just can go on to any social media platform so I think it's Daniel Official on Instagram I don't have them all the same so it's annoying on Twitter it's Daniel A. Johnson my name is Aaron um, uh, my sister did say it just sounds like Daniel is a dick but don't worry it's just Daniel A. Johnson um, and uh, for fair enough love sisters uh, it's Daniel Official on Facebook and if you do listen to a podcast um, and please don't drink bleach I'm just going to say that now uh, if you do listen to a podcast uh, you can find uh, um all of one, two, and three series of Best Thing from wherever you get your podcasts. And the new uh, um, podcast, which is called Little Help, you can find also on the same platform. If you just like and subscribe, it'll just come rolling every single um, every single day for Little Help and every single week for Best Thing. And the good thing about Best Thing, the podcast, is if you don't have time to listen to a full episode of someone chatting around about how their best thing, or I don't know, Mick and us, uh, we do have the best bits of Best Thing season one, two and three and it's a shorter episode and we've got some clips of all the guests so if there's anything that takes your fancy you can then go and listen so i would say if podcasts are not your thing yet then uh, go and listen to the best bits the best thing so i think season three one is coming out in two weeks time so do you know that 14.6 million people in the uk listen to podcasts on um one of the largest platforms um yes but if you think about that I would also say that, yes, 14 million people play podcasts. 
I wouldn't say people uh, individually are listening. And so there are so many more people to get out there to listen. There's 63 million people in this country and then the world is mental. So um, it, it, I guess it all comes down to um, if you like someone um, and then you like the guests. Some of my favorite podcasts, Adam Buxton podcast is one of my favorites. And at the beginning, I'd only listen to the guests that I knew. Now I listen to the guests that I didn't know. Joe Rogan, of course, um, who's smashed it since 2009 a big listener of his and they're big three hours. My one's just an hour and little help is only two minutes. So you can, you can watch it in an advert break, listen to it in an advert break anyway. Oh, no, that sounds amazing. I mean, I've got some favorite podcasts as well. One for me. I need a, I need a. Well, no, one for me is that it's a a little bit more sort of newsy and current affairs is um, Megan Kelly. Oh, nice. Cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She used to be at Fox News. So yeah, she... there's there a film, Charlie Theron and stuff, with, and uh, Margot Robbie and stuff like that, weren't it? Yeah, great film. Yeah, so Megan Kelly's great. And also, I like Jordan Peterson. The, the, um... uh, I'm a Jordan Peterson fan, me too. Uh, yeah, no, he's amazing. I my life and stuff like that. Yeah, I do live by it. That's where little help in some sort of formats. It doesn't come from, but there are, like, individual words, and I've gone for just the different words that we're going to be using for each step. So I think I've written, I think, 16 talks that um, that I'm going to be taking out. So talk one is going to take maybe a year to do um, just a little bit. So, um, it's yeah, it's going to be crazy. No, fantastic. Well, do you know what? Thank you, Daniel, for coming on Tea Time. It's been great to see you. And Thanks. I'm sure we'll catch up again at another time. Take care. That'd be good. Bye-bye. Look forward to chatting with my next guest on the Tea Time Sofa this time next Saturday. In the meantime, if you would love to get in touch about having a chat with me, you can reach me on Tea Time at forthenow.co.uk where you can find me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram on Tea Time with AM. Bye for now.